DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America, starring Cary Grant. Good evening. This is Cary Grant. You know, behind the great events in history, there are deeply human, sometimes very moving stories. Recently, I heard of such a one, about a young man and his wife who sacrificed everything, even life itself for our country. And we would like to bring it to you now on the Cavalcade of America. Robert Townsend, here is Signal to the World. Time, 1780. Place, a drawing room in New York City. Wonderful, excellent. Thank heaven for your wife. Oh, I often do, Sir Henry. And with good reason. Come here, Susan. I'm glad you liked it, Sir Henry. Townsend, you're a lucky devil. Charming, talented wife, prosperous business, not a care in the world. Up to now, none at all. Up to now? Something wrong, Robert? I, uh, I was just wondering, what happens to me if, uh, if the rebels win this war? Bosh, not a chance. Washington knows he's about done for. Well, they're still fighting, Sir Henry. Last ditch, Stan, Robert, last ditch all over but the shouting. Take it from me, my lad, as commander-in-chief, I know. Really, Sir Henry? Then the end is that close for the colonists? That it is, Susan. <laughs> Tomorrow they'll wake up to a shocking surprise. They'll... <laughs> uh, yes, Sir Henry? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Robert, it's very late. We'd better be going. Oh, of course, darling. Our apologies, Sir Henry, but uh, Susan, you know, she needs her rest. Oh? Oh, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> What'll you name the lad, Robert? <laughs> It might be a girl, you know. Possibility, yes. Remote, but a possibility. <laughs> Come in. Excuse me, Sir Henry. Well, what is it, Lieutenant? A messenger, sir. Good. Send him in. Yes, sir. I, uh, I think we'd better be going. Ah, oh, not now, Robert, not now. I, uh, I believe this is the news I've been waiting for. Wait and hear it. The messenger, Sir Henry. Oh, come in, man. Come in. Dispatch for Sir Henry Clinton, Lieutenant General, His Majesty's Forces, Commander-in-Chief... All right, all right. I know who I am, and so do you. Now give me the dispatch. <laughs> Soon be back in England. This nasty little disturbance will be only a memory. Oh. No. No, it's a mistake. Uh, what's wrong, Sir Henry? You're pale. Here's some wine. No, no, thank you. Robert. Yes, sir? I believe you know Major Andre... Uh, John Andre? Very well, sir. We're a good friend. Major Andre's been captured as a spy. A spy? That's right. Well, I, I don't understand, sir. Andre was a British officer, never a spy. He was sent on a mission to negotiate with Benedict Arnold. What went wrong? It was all so foolproof, so sure. Where was the leak? But Andre, an officer... Andre will be hanged, Townsend, hanged like a common spy because there was a leak somewhere. Close to this command. Yeah. Do, uh, do you suspect anyone, Sir Henry? Yes. A man who calls himself Samuel Culper, Jr. Oh, well, who is this Samuel Culper? No one's ever seen him. I wonder, Robert. I wonder. But I swear this. Should I ever find out who he is, I'll hang him within two minutes of his capture. to be home. Yes, it, uh, it wasn't the most pleasant evening we've ever spent. Robert, why will Andre be hanged? Why? Well, because he's a spy. He was a British officer. Susan, I don't know what happened. I have no way of knowing yet. We'll have to wait. How much do you think Sir Henry knows? Very little. Even that's too much. Oh, now stop thinking about it, dear. I've got to. Now more than ever. Well, someday soon, it'll all be over. When? 
When, Robert? I can't tell. <laughs> oh, darling, please, please. They'll hang him, Robert. As though he were a horrible criminal, they'll hang him. And you... you... Susan, stop it, do you hear? Stop it. I'm sorry, darling. I had to shout at you. Now look at me. What's happened is done and over. There's no taking it back from the past. I, I'm i fond of John Andre. He's my friend, but he's a soldier. As his friend, I would have done anything for him. As a soldier, he took his risks, and there's nothing I can do. That's callous and cold. Yes, even brutal, Susan. Brutality and viciousness are always the byproducts of war. I... Austin. I didn't mean to fear frighten you. Been in the kitchen. Came in the back way. How long have you been here? Oh, going on two hours. Were you seen? Oh, 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 not much. I got a neck, too, you know. And I've no hanker to feel that. Oh, Austin, please. Oh, I'm sorry. But I got to talk with you, Robbie. All right. Susan, you better get to bed. No, I want to stay. Oh, please, my Could dear. be she ought to hear this, Robbie. All right, what is the matter? I take it you heard the news. About Andre? Yes. Caught him red-handed. Had the plans of West Point in his boot. But how can they hang him? He's a British officer. When he was caught, he wasn't aware in a uniform. Dressed in clothes like mine. Or yours, Robbie. Austin, if you knew we'd find out about Andre, why did you risk coming here? There's something else, isn't there? There is. West Point is safe. Benedict Arnold did not have the chance to hand it over. Thank God. Your information was correct. It got through to General Washington and Talmadge just in time. But there's something else still, Robbie. Go on. Arnold is coming here to New York. What? He wasn't taken by Washington. No, no, no. He got away. No. Oh, dear. Robbie, Susan, the chances are Arnold knows quite a few names. He'll talk. Oh, loud and long. To get in good with Clinton. Yeah, he'll go the traitor all the way now. How many of us do you think Arnold knows? Hmm, hard to tell. But heaven help us if Clinton finds out I'm no just a tavern keeper, or that you are Samuel Culper, Jr. I hope you're not going out of your way, Sir Henry. Not at all, Robert. Glad I saw you walking along. Wanted someone to talk to. Oh? I hated that business about Andre. Poor devil. Should have stayed in uniform. Yeah. Do you have any idea how the news leaked out? Andre was almost through when he was taken. I'll find out, Townsend. I've got a pretty good idea who this Samuel Culper person might be. That surprised you, Robert? I, uh, I thought he was a deep mystery. Uh -huh. Use your head, lad. Figure it out. He's got to be someone close to my officers. Talks with them on friendly terms. Oh, why do you say that, Sir Henry? Every bit of information has come from officers only. It doesn't take a genius to guess this culprit's friendly with them. Yeah, well, that's reasonable. Moreover, he's someone they trust. Perhaps, perhaps even someone I trust. <laughs> that, uh, that description rather fits me, sir. Uh-huh. <laughs> Except for one thing, Townsend. One thing? You mean, uh, I'm not the type to be a spy? Oh, you brain, daring, courage. But you forget one thing. You're making too much money out of this thing to be a rebel. <laughs> I dare say you've turned a pretty penny buying stuff from our privateers and selling it back to us, eh? Oh, yes, yes. I'm quite a blackguard. Oh, quite. <laughs> Therefore, you are not Samuel Culper, because if the colonists win, your business will be done for. Huh? Completely ruined, sir. Oh, uh, there's the church. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, let's stop. Stop here, Charles. Will you? I'm meeting Susan, you know, to take her home. My compliments to her, Robert. Fine work she's doing with the refugees. Oh, well, little enough to do for the poor devils. Well, thank you, Sir Henry. Uh, perhaps we'll have dinner some night this week, eh? An honor and a delight, Sir Henry. Good day. Good day, Robert. All right, Charles. Robert, Robert. Susan, what are you doing out here? We have no time to waste. I've heard something. Perhaps it means nothing at all, but with what you are... I... Robert, I feel faint. Oh, Susan. No, it's just excitement. Now, quickly, Robert, we've got to get home. You'd better send for Austin Rowe. We'll pass the smithy on the way home. Terry will get to Rome. Come on. <laughs> Better, darling? Hmm, much. How long did 
I sleep? Three hours. Three hours? Robert, why did you let me? Well, it was no use waking you until Austin got here. He's come? In the kitchen. Oh. Austin, oh. ready. Will you forgive me helping myself to a bite, I hope? Of course. Mm. You're an uncommon good cook, Susan. Yes, you'll be riding on an uncommon full stomach, Austin. I'll need it. Well, what's the thing this time? Yes, come on, Susan. Tell us. Today, I was told to move my refugees out to make room for wounded. So, that's no news. French wounded. Uh, what? French? Susan, are you sure? Yes. But there are none. Not yet, anyway. I... Not yet. Austin, hand me that map. All right, here. Go on, Susan, while I look yes, at the map. Sir. I tried to learn more from Captain Clayton. He was the one who told me about the wounded. Yes? Major Grenell must have overheard him. What? Because he sent Captain Clayton away quickly. Ah. Did, did Grenell question you? No. Good. Well, what's it about, Robbie? Look here. The French army supporting Washington is here. Aye. Now, if the British move, they can surprise it. Oh, ho! Captain Clayton made a bad slip. He said within the week. That's it. A surprise move on the French. Draw it out from support. Aye. Destroy it. And move in on General Washington. Aye, and that's the end. How fast can you ride to Woodhall to let him know this? Fast as my horse will take me. Then do it. Hi, I'm on my way. God speed. Hi, and God keep the two of you safe. Oh, Robert. Do you think Benedict Arnold will tell Clinton about us? Of course not. How could he know about us? All the same, you're not going back to the church tomorrow, darling. But I must have bringing all those wounded. There are others to tend them. I made up my mind. You finished with all this. I'm sorry I let you start it. But you take the same risk? Susan, I'm a man. I chose this way to fight for the country I love, for a life of peace and brotherhood, and I allowed you to help. But now it's, it's become grim and ugly and dirty. Andre's death showed me that. A man. A man of flesh and blood ending his life dangling obscenely from a bit of rope. Robert, Robert, don't, don't, please. Well, I want no more of it for you, Susan. God willing, when this is over, you and I and our child may live in peace. But until then, no more of it for you. Because I love you. Master Townsend, Master Townsend. My goody Hawkins, what's wrong? Your wife, your wife, you be not home, Master Townsend, you be not. But where did she go? Was she with anyone? Did she leave any message? Answer me. I... I see her go. With the man she was. What man? Soldiers, they be. Redcoats. Redcoats? British? I, they come and took her away. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's only three hours past now. They come and... Susan. No, Susan. No. No. Oh. our story, Robert Townsend, working as a spy for George Washington, discovers that his wife Susan has been taken by the British soldiers. But it's now five days later, and Townsend is talking with his two close friends and accomplices, Woodhull and Austin Rowe. Austin, what news? What about Susan? What did you learn? It's bad news, Robbie. They've taken her all right. She's their prisoner now. How do you know? I heard two soldiers talking about it. It seems that Major Grenell overheard her pumping Captain Clayton for more information about the attack on the French. And the soldiers mentioned something about Samuel Culper, Jr. They believe Susan is Samuel Culper? Aye. But I am. Where are you going, Robert? To Sir Henry. Wait, lad, wait. You know he's not here. Not to the authorities, then. You are committing suicide. Better than murdering my own wife. You're going to give yourself up? Is there anything else? No. Grab him! Grab him, Rose! Let go of me, Austin! Let go, you fool! Don't you see what's happening to you, Susan? And worse will happen to you if they get their hands on Samuel Culper. Get away from me! No, Robbie! Please, Robert, just a moment. Think. Giving yourself up to save Susan won't do any good. They'll hang you. And hold Susan anyway. Robbie! As things stand now, there's no sure evidence that Susan is a spy. Only guesses. Don't you see that? But she's not well. And the child... We'll do everything we can to help you, but for heaven's sake, help us by being calm. Sure, Robbie. They may be fighting us, but the redcoats are not brutes. We'll get to Susan some way. How? I tried. I know a Mary Johnson, a pleasant, pretty one. 
has a way with soldiers, especially the lobster jacks. If anyone can get past those guards, she can. I'll stake my word you'll have news of your wife tomorrow. Good evening, sir. I'm Mary Johnson. Mistress Johnson? Oh, do come in. Thank you. You saw her? You saw Susan? Yes, I... I saw her, sir. How is she? Are they treating her well? Tell me, how is she? She's very ill, sir. Ill? Well, I've got to go to her. Uh, sir, it would be useless. Well, there's one way I can do it. Woodhull Row wouldn't let me do it before, but now I've got to. The last thing she asked of me before I left her was... was to keep you safe. Safe? Keep me safe? They can have me. I'm through with deceit and lying. Deceit? Lies? Oh, sir, it seems to me you've rendered your country a great service. Service? <laughs> Skulking about in the night like a sneak thief, hated by those who think I betrayed my country. What service is that? What is left after self-respect is gone? Sir, there's one thing, something you've got to live for. Yes, Susan, my wife. No, wait a moment. Sally, come in now. All right, Sally, I'll take it. You wait outside. Here. Here's what you have to live for, sir. Susan. What about Susan? Oh, oh sir, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> She's dead. You didn't tell me that. Why not? I thought your son would help a little. I killed her. And for what? A hopeless cause. And... Sir, they're saying there's more hope now than ever before. For whom? For me? For Susan? Bring her back. Let our cause or our hope bring her back for an hour. Even a minute, then I'll believe you. Then I'll believe what I did was right. I'm sorry, Woodhull. There's no use asking me. I'm through. Robert, you can't quit now. Five days ago, my wife died a prisoner in enemy hands because of me. Five days ago, my son was born in the shadow of a gallows. And you asked me to go on. If there was another way, I, w I wouldn't have come to you. But only you can get to Sir Henry Clinton. He likes you. If he'd been here, perhaps Susan wouldn't have... No. Listen to me, Robert. Cornwallis is in the south. If Washington and Rochambeau attack... It'll end the war. Not if Clinton marches to support Cornwallis. It's hopeless. Does he have to march? Robert, if Washington could be sure Sir Henry would stay in New York, one last blow might win for us. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes son. It's all right. It's all right. Well, Robert. Woodhull, we live a short time. A pitifully short time. It may be that you and I and General Washington may not even live to see what we fought for come to fruition. But perhaps he will. Perhaps my son will. And his son, too. Well, how soon does General Washington need the information? He's waiting now. All right. I'll try. But this is the last time, Woodhull. The last time. <laughs> I've been hoping you'd come, Robert. I'm dreadfully sorry about Susan. Dreadfully. Thank you, Sir Henry. If I'd been here, you... Well, you'd have been able to see her. As it was... Oh, hang it all, Robert. This war is a horrible business for all of us. A man... I don't say this personally, Robert, mind you, but... A man cannot be even sure of his own wife. There was no evidence against my wife. And even if there had been... I know, lad, I know. It was a tragic mistake. I beg you to bear in mind that I was not here when it happened. If I had been... Uh, well, what can I say now? I'm sure you would have done everything you could. Everything. And your son, how is he? Excellent, thank you. Splendid. 
Oh, why isn't this whole stupid nonsense over with? I tell you, Robert, we are losing stomach for it. I've more than a little sympathy for... Well, never mind. Well, perhaps it will soon be over. Lord Cornwallis is doing well in the South. Yes, yes, so they say. We haven't had much news from that quarter of late. I had thought of marching to Cornwallis' support, but... And leave New York to a new untried officer? Yes, yes, there's that, of course. I've got New York to take care of. Robert, I'm glad you've come here. You've settled me in my determination to remain here and let Cornwallis clean up that little business in the South by himself. He's done little enough in this war. A wise decision, Sir Henry. Well, sir, I, uh, I must leave now. Yes, yes, of course. You run along and... Robert... Take care of that son of yours. That, Sir Henry, is exactly what I'm doing. to take you around. Hello, Austin. Well, why the long face, my bucko? Oh, I'm sorry. I should have had better sense. Come on in. You've heard, of course. Yes. Oh, it was a fine thing, Robbie. Washington and Rochambeau moving in on Cornwallis. The French fleet holding Chesapeake Bay bottled up, my lord, was like old rum in a jug. And Sir Henry Clinton fooled into staying up here. Austin, <laughs> Austin, I... Please, don't tell anyone what I did, will you? And why not? If General Washington had not been sure that Clinton was staying here... Please, don't tell anyone. Oh? Well, just as you say. Now, how about coming out for a bit of quiet celebration? After all, this is the American victory. Later, perhaps. But tonight, I want to stay home. Oh, sure. Well, goodbye, Robbie. And the best to your son. Thank you. Good night, Austin. Good night, Robbie. Pray close the door, Master Townsend. The wee laddie's awake with all the noise. Well, I want him to hear it. Give him to me. Just as you say, Master Townsend. Now, take care you don't hurt him. Thank you, Kitty. Thank you. You may go now. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Son, you don't understand what I'm saying, I know. But I want you to hear. Listen. That's for you. And those that'll come after you. Right now, it's only a lot of sound. But behind those bells are men you've never seen and never will. And a woman you've never seen. They're gone, lad. But they've left something behind for you. This signal to the world. There's nothing you can touch or see. But you can feel it in the free air and the free land. If there's any prayer I or anyone else can offer for you, it's that you'll be worthy of all this, Robbie. Be worthy of it. Stepping out of his role of Robert Townsend is the star of our play tonight, Cary Grant. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's a, uh, there's a curious footnote to this story. Robert Townsend's identity, the fact that he was Washington's famous spy Samuel Culper, Jr., remained a secret, unknown until the 20th century. As a matter of fact, it was only a few years ago that the historian Morton Pennypacker came upon this remarkable discovery in old letters, ledgers, and accounts of the revolution. Tonight's cavalcade play, Signal to the World, was written by Russell Hughes and was based on a feature entitled The Quaker and the General by George Scullum, published in True, the Man's Magazine. Cary Grant is currently starring in the 20th Century Fox production, I Was a Male War Bride. Featured in tonight's cast with Cary Grant, was Joan Loring as Susan. Horace Graham was Clinton, and Barry Kroger was Rowe. The program was directed by John Zoller, 
The music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Voorhees. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ted Pearson. Since the beginning, religious institutions in this country have strengthened the fabric of American life and helped to keep it free. We urge you to attend and support the religious institution of your choice. Next week, Cavalcade stars Ray Milland. The story, The Greatest Risk, a swashbuckling comedy about a follower of Bonnie Prince Charlie in colonial America, living in fearful danger and falling deeply in love. We invite you to listen. Cavalcade of America comes to you from the stage of the Belasco Theater in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Stay tuned for the return of Baby Snooks on NBC.